Hey Badass Family, welcome back to another video. I'm Michelle C. Smith, Professional Badass, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you three tips on how to master staff spinning, or any skill really, in your left hand. Are you ready? I admit it, you are better than I am. And why are you smiling? Because I know something you don't know. And what is that? I am not left-handed. No, really, are you ready to learn the secret sauce to getting really, really good in your non-dominant hand? You're not gonna like the answer, I can guarantee it. Yeah, are you ready? Okay, let's go. a huge generalization here since only 10 to 12 percent of the population is actually left-handed i'm gonna assume that you are right-handed okay oh, there's something i ought to tell you tell me i'm not left-handed either <laughs> if you are in fact left-handed congratulations welcome and thank you for being here Food and drinks will be served at the left-handers living in a right-hand world group therapy session later on. Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm left-handed. So I get this question slash comment a lot. My left hand blank skill feels weird. How do I get better at spinning in my left hand? Totally valid question and a great question because we're not encouraged to even think about, let alone learn or experiment with using our left hand or non-dominant hand. A lot of people simply don't even know how to start using their less dominant hands for anything. You're born with a preferred hand and that's the hand that you're conditioned and expected to use for everything for the rest of your life. End of story. Side note, this does not apply to most left-handed people because from the moment we start reaching and grasping for things, it becomes very clear that we have to adapt to a right-handed world. I'm looking at you. Scissors, mugs, desks in school, notebooks, binders, computer mice, computers in general, pens on a chain at the bank, vending machines. There's more, there's tons more. I could go on for days. It really baffles me how right-handed adults seem to have such a hard time adapting to their lefts. I recently watched a video by the Try Guys, my favorite YouTube creators, and they did a video challenging each other to use their left hands for things. And I was so surprised at how these super smart guys could not figure out how to use their left hands, except Eugene. Eugene figured it out because let's be real, he's the best Try Guy, hands down. The other three, Zach, Ned, and Keith, all seem to forget that they have two hands, so they did everything in their left, but for some reason they thought that that meant that they couldn't use their right hand to help. And the whole time I'm thinking, you guys have two hands, why aren't you using both hands? Just because you're using your left hand as your dominant hand doesn't mean you can't use your right hand to help, it just depends on what hand's driving the boat. Anyway, this is a pattern that I see frequently within my students. Staff spinning is a two-handed practice. Any skill that you can do on the right exists on the left. However, the fact that in general, most people's left hands are so underutilized that the task of practicing in both hands seems nearly impossible. Well, I'm here to tell you that it isn't, but I am sorry to tell you that the real secret to creating proficiency in your left hand is to use your left hand. That's it, that's the secret sauce. I told you you weren't gonna like it. Feel the wrath of the left hand of Burns. So the truth is, is that you have spent your entire life building up these very specific fine motor skills in your dominant hands. Probably you're right. That means your left brain is very active. There's a lifetime of neural pathways created to produce proficiency on your dominant side. That's fabulous. However, you are not using your brain to its full potential. You're only using half. Imagine the superpowers you could have if you learn to use both sides of your brain. Hmm? So 
So the only problem with your left is that you just haven't spent any time building up those same motor pathways. So yes, you do come pre-wired to prefer a certain side, but that doesn't exclude you from using your non-dominant side. You just have a favorite side. The great news is, is that you can start building those pathways in your left hand and right brain right now. And the even better news is that it can be extremely beneficial to your life. Wow, amazing. Tell me more. Benefits to using your non-dominant hand include, but are not limited to, it makes you smarter. You can pick up new skills and movement faster and easier than ever before. You'll also remember things longer. It's great brain gym for creating neuroplasticity. Helps keep your brain sharp and active like a puzzle, which is great if you're concerned about mental deterioration. It helps balance and even out your body. For people like me who were dancers, gymnasts, or based in any sort of movement practice, where you generally pick a favorite side for certain skills, and then you only practice that one side over and over and over and over again, and then 20 to 30 years later down the line, your body is in pain and really out of alignment, and it's because you did 10 million illusions on your right side and only your right side, and you did exactly zero on your left, and then you wonder why your back and hips hurt all the fucking time. I'm not speaking from personal experience whatsoever. Anyway, it helps you keep an open mind, which is part of being a good human being in my opinion. Maybe even help you see things from a different perspective other than your own. It also helps create novelty and reduces boredom. And humans love novelty, we thrive on it in fact, and we fucking hate being bored. Here are three tips for creating proficiency in your non-dominant hand. It's your left hand. Number one, start your practice or your warm up in your least favorite hand first. And this is because the hand that you start with is generally the hand that you're gonna spend the most time on. Because our brains crave novelty, we don't like being bored. By the time you've finished warming up on that first hand and you get to the second hand, you're already over it. So you might as well make the least amount of time you spend on the hand that's actually feeling a bit better and has a little bit more proficiency already built in. And you can apply this to any skill that you're trying to learn. Like if you're trying to learn the splits on both sides, start stretching on the side you like the least. Number two, use a two to one ratio when you're doing your repetitions. So we know that the key to success in staff spinning is repetition. And we also know that our non-dominant hands tend to be less proficient than our dominant hand. So we can help bridge that gap by doubling the amount of reps that we do in that non-dominant hand. So for example, if I'm doing 10 backhand flips in my right, I'm going to do 20 backhand flips in my left. And you can apply this to any skill across the board. Number three, challenge yourself to create or reverse combos on your non-dominant side. So this could mean that you take a selection of skills that you already know, and then you mirror it on that non-dominant side. Or if you're feeling really fancy, you could just make up a new combo specifically for your non-dominant side. Because it's one thing to have singular skills or words on your non-dominant side, it's another thing to be able to have a full conversation. Being able to get into those transitions on either side and know where you are in space, that's where the real proficiency lies. So tell me, what are some of the other ways that you have found helpful in practicing on your non-dominant hand? Leave a comment down below because I wanna know. If you wanna learn more and train with me, that's fabulous because I wanna share everything I know with you. So make sure you check all the links down below. I have tons of tutorials, courses, an online academy dedicated to sharing these badass staff spinning skills with you. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe and hit the little bell icon and leave a comment and a like and all of that stuff. You know how to work the internet. I've got a new video coming out on YouTube every week, so make sure you're tuning in and I hope you have a great time practicing in your left hand. Okay, bye. One. Just kidding. One. Excuse me. 
George, George, that's not your food. No. Ah! You're born with a preferred hand, and that's the hand that you're expected to use for everything, for everything. Pause. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the leave, the the the. Oh my gosh, arm is tired. hair in my mouth the whole time.